let's drag a Butterworth IIR filter to our project. On the Z-plane and transfer function views, you can drag the mouse to rotate or pan the view. Rolling the mouse wheel will zoom in and out. The transfer function view is basically a 3D view of the Z-plane view. If you rotate it so that it's flat, you can see that we are actually looking at the same thing. On the Z-plane view, the X's are called poles and the O's are called zeros. If you rotate and examine the transfer function view, you will see that it gets pulled up by the poles and pulled down by the zeros. It is the positioning of the poles and zeros that controls the shape of the transfer function, which then defines the shape of the filter's frequency response curve. The outside of the circle is called the unit circle because it has a magnitude of 1. The unit circle is where the z-plane meets the frequency domain. If we enable decibels or logarithmic scaling on the graph view and rotate, we can see the frequency response at the intersection of the transfer function and the unit circle. We should now begin to see how these three views are related. We'll drag a blank filter to the application, then add a pair of conjugate poles. The conjugate poles are paired and mirrored across the horizontal axis of the z-plane. We'll grab the pole and move it around. In the frequency response, you'll see that a peak follows the pole as you move it. Moving the pole towards the unit circle will cause the peak to become stronger. Moving it towards the center will cause it to become weaker. Rotating the pole around the center towards the left will cause the peak to increase in frequency. Variable z is a complex number, which means that it has two coordinates that can be expressed as a radius and an angle. The radius corresponds to magnitude, and the angle corresponds to frequency. If you look at the impulse response, you will see that the filter will ring at the frequency corresponding to the pole. When the pole is inside the unit circle, the impulse response will decay exponentially. On the unit circle, it will oscillate forever at that frequency. If the pole is outside the unit circle, the response will increase exponentially, which is unstable. Filters never have poles outside the unit circle because this produces an unstable filter. We'll add a Butterworth filter. If you go to the structure view, you will see two rows of equations at the top. These are the filter's transfer functions. The transfer function view is a graphical representation of this function. The top one is in pole zero form, and the bottom one is in polynomial form. They are both the same equation, and the bottom one can be obtained from the top one by multiplying its terms together. The pole zero form has the negative coordinates of the zeros on the top row and the negative coordinates of the poles on the bottom row. When the top row equals zero, the transfer function will be zero and this corresponds to a zero. When the bottom row equals zero, the transfer function will be infinite because we are dividing by zero and this corresponds to a pole. We can see that when z equals minus one, minus 1 plus 1 equals 0, the top row will be multiplied by 0, the transfer function will be 0, so we say that there is a 0 at z equals minus 1. When z equals 0 0.548 plus j 0 0.234, the bottom row will become 0. We are dividing by 0, so the transfer function will be infinite, and we say that there is a pole when we multiply out the pole zero form of the transfer function, we get the polynomial form. The polynomial form gives you the coefficients of the filter. The top row gives you the feedforward coefficients, think FIR, and the bottom row gives you the feedback coefficients, think IIR. The transfer function of an IIR filter has both a numerator and a denominator, but the transfer function of an FIR filter has only a numerator. 
This is the last in the series of our introductory DSP tutorials. We hope to shortly cover a new series of tutorials covering more advanced topics in DSP and digital filter design.